I look now if we could transition topics to something like Spider-Man. Spider-Man Miles Morales coming to PS4. Um, I have it on PS4. I've been playing it on PS4. Looks great, but there is very clear, like, apparent upgrades if you're playing it on PS5. Whether it's through fidelity mode with ray tracing and the improved visuals, playing it at 4K, or whether it's through the performance mode where you do get up it says they said up to 60 fps which worried me for a long time they never said like it's 60 fps they always like yeah you could play it at up to 60 fps which is very like specific wording but from what i've seen based on reviews from other people who played it on the ps5 which i unfortunately didn't get the luxury of it does run at a consist consistent 60 fps through gameplay at all times the only times okay. it dips is i think during uh during certain cutscenes, but during gameplay it is a consistent 60 FPS, which is awesome. Um, and I mean, like, you're right, Camille. There are going to be games, especially with every console generation cycle, there are going to be games that maybe they might end up being next or like just full on next gen. But usually PlayStation and Microsoft, they're like, hold on. We don't want to not include the guys who haven't or are not going to be able to afford the next gen or haven't been able to pre-order next gen right away. You know, so they still provide an opportunity for those people to play their games. Wasn't yeah. there a, a a Nintendo DS game released not too long ago as like the final Nintendo DS game? But like, was there? When, oh yeah, yeah not too wasn't very long that. ago. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, like, but yeah, that, that doesn't tell you, right? I mean, obviously that's just slightly different because it is more about demographics and like we are a little more separated from you know the rest of the world that is like still yeah. only playing. Like I miss Street Pass so much. I wish I could. <laughs> Um, like I just like you know go hang out in like China or something and just like like shoot past with people. Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Um, but like that that that's just to illustrate the point that they you know you need to value these not only demographics but just uh, how many of these old consoles are in existence, right? right. Like mm -hmm. they're not yes. going anywhere, and the people up you know people are upgrading still have those old consoles too, right? So like you mm -hmm. have just this this plethora of people, you have an existing audience, and to not. You know, to especially in these these weird uncertain times that we're in right now, where it, we don't really know the outcome of this current console war right now. We don't really know yeah. how many how many of these are going to sell. It's I, I have no idea because it's the first time in a long time that even I've been like, do I need the new console? You know, like I've been mean, do do I wait? And I think a lot of people are feeling that yeah. way as well. So it's going to yeah. be very interesting to see uh, how how long until we start seeing like new console exclusive because even xbox is like right and said that like it'll happen eventually like they've yeah. kind of danced around that but they've implied that yes. but they've yeah. not yet right they haven't even really given us a date it's like we're just going to keep cross-platform making games right well it's so interesting you look at the the overwhelming success of the playstation 4 mm. and yeah. now you're seeing sony be like well we can't just abandon all these all these players until they yeah. come into the PlayStation 5 ecosystem. That's why, yes. you know, everyone was so surprised when they're like, oh, uh, Horizon 2 is going to be on PlayStation 4 as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ragnarok's the same thing. And this is why Microsoft's doing the exact same thing with Xbox One, where they're like, okay, we're not going to be making straight exclusives for at least a, two years after launch because there are so many consoles out there. And they're not just going to abandon the whole ecosystem. Yeah. It doesn't make sense business wise to do that, right? Yeah, you want no. to, you know, all of your users may not be able to afford to upgrade to next gen. You have to still continue to support them. And when you look at a title like uh, Miles Morales for PlayStation 5, uh, Aaron, I know you're playing that on PlayStation 4. Yeah. They're offering you the opportunity to upgrade to PlayStation 5 um, for that, correct? Uh, sorry. So you're saying like they can upgrade? So it, yeah. When yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a free upgrade path. Uh, it's. I I honestly I was starting to get a little confused about the way upgrading was working, but it seems super yeah. easy. Even if you have a disc copy of Spider-Man Miles Morales on your PlayStation Four, you take that disc and just put it in your PS5, and it'll download the now upgraded version of the game with all the additional upgrades that you would want: ray tracing, performance mode, all that fun stuff. Um, if you have it on through digital, it'll just show up in your library when you sign in and link your account uh, to your PlayStation 5. So yeah, that free upgrade is there. The upgrade path is available for you. And and that was a, a big part of my review as well is that I know there's a lot of people out there who are concerned, like they have this feeling of, of FOMO. Like, am I, am I missing out if I'm not going to play Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5? And for me, I was even having that feeling, you know, like I, I'm getting a code, which by the way, shout out Sony Interactive Entertainment Canada for the code. 
Um, but I'm getting a code for the PlayStation 4, and I'm like, oh, I really wanted my first playthrough of this game to be on the PlayStation 5. Am I missing out on something here? I play the game. First of all, like, I think it looks still great on the PlayStation 4. Uh, and I even see upgrades visually. I went back and played Spider-Man PS4. I see visual upgrades from Spider-Man PS4 to Miles Morales. Um, and then also, one thing I was really impressed with is... Um, and, and I remember pointing this out when Game Informer was doing their coverage. They showed a demo of the game where Miles is doing one of those uh, gang hideouts where he's taking out some enemies. And usually in Spider-Man PS4, the way that that worked is you would go inside, there'd be a loading screen, you'd load up into the new hideout, take out the enemies, you leave, there'd be a loading screen, then you're back in the open world. In Miles Morales, and even on the PlayStation 4 version, you'd go into the gang hideout and leave without a loading screen. It would be all a full seamless transition. And I thought that that was really cool um, that they did that even for the PlayStation 4 version of the game. Uh, so yeah, there isn't too much you're missing out on. Obviously, ray tracing is a cool thing. 60 FPS for Spider-Man is going to be dope. But if you're already used to Spider-Man PS4, if you already experienced the game with 30 FPS, it's not going to be different. You know, you're just, you're playing a new Spider-Man game now. It's going to look better got a new story it's got new gameplay uh and yeah i think i think it looks cool and then when inevitably you do get a playstation 5 that free upgrade is available for you that's the thing right like going back to being inclusive for all users whether they're previous gen or next gen right um that alone the up like why are we not talking about how you're able to upgrade how this is now becoming a thing why aren't we gaming? talking about why this are we talking about it let's talk but but this is the thing now, like that a lot of studios are offering the free upgrade to next gen. We have not yep. seen that really before. Um, right. So that's really cool that we're getting to this point that now it is just focused on getting you to play great games no matter what you're playing on. And, you know, as uh, cross play becomes more apparent, I think we're going to see more of this. Now, mm -hmm. then, the question for after PlayStation 5 or after the Xbox Series X and S it will make us want to buy a, a new console. And th that's the thing that's so refreshing is because I didn't even know. Quicker yeah, I didn't resume. Even know quicker re <laughs> the quickest resume. But I didn't even know I wanted fast loading times like yeah. that or quick resume. Like that would be the thing that would want me to buy a new next gen console. Um, mm -hmm. But it is. So it's, it's refreshing to know that you don't know necessarily what the thing is that will want you to move to a next next gen. Mm hmm. It'll just have to be if there's new tech that gets invented in these next seven years. Because, I mean, yeah, like, I, I joke and say 8K, but that's probably when we get to the next next gen, the cell, yeah. right? Is that, hey, it's not just 4K now, it's 8K. What does that mm. mean? I don't know, but it sounds so, cool, right? <laughs> so, so that topic's interesting because even 4K right now is not very achievable um right. you know i'll say as someone who runs beasts of computers right and mm -hmm. runs series x things like that right like it's your it's 4k is so hard to do still so like when games games have to be so optimized yeah so well optimized to be able to effectively do 4k 60 plus and plus being the big thing here because now series x is all about you know getting to 120 which right. is also tough because you need to find uh uh tvs that do that um and like even monitors are having troubles doing it with with console i can i can speak on behalf of i've been testing it with like i haven't been able to achieve it uh with any of my hardware um even though some of them kind of state you can do it i haven't been able to just because mm -hmm. it needs some specific you know it needs a very specific it seems almost more tailored to because uh, monitors i think it's more that monitors are having troubles getting there right now like oh it's only yeah. we're only starting to see monitors hit like higher higher refresh rates on like 4k devices uh right. where we do have some tvs that even still like that they're kind of few and far between you got to get right. ones that like they need to go out there and start i think they're already kind of doing it but like start really certifying that they you know have a have a screen that says you know certified for xbox kind of thing because you're going to yeah. come home with a new 4k tv and be like well xbox doesn't actually give you all, all that you want out of this thing right or if you, you know maybe you can't use hdr or whatever on it so so between having all the hardware to do it and being able to have the power to even efficiently do a 4k game like my pc crumbles when i try to do that with <laughs> with with almost anything right if i want to have any kind of decent refresh rate so even the talk now of like i don't even think in five years or whatever it's going to be that we have a new console that they might start touting 8k 
But even by then, maybe at that time, we'll start seeing 4K start becoming yeah. more common. And this is just historically, yes. right? Like historically speaking, think of how long it took people to even get to 1080p. Most people yeah. were on 720. Um, and it's, it's you know, like my, I, I, I only may have a 1080p TV. My TV is 1080p because it's a big screen. I'm like, mm-hmm. You know, like it's a good looking screen. Good like, oh, do yeah. I, yeah, do I do I really need it yet? Uh, and I don't think I do yet. Um, so so it's gonna be interesting seeing what that looks like and when you know when we start here in 8K. To everyone take that with a grain of salt because it's gonna be like it, it's exponential. It's not just like oh, it needs to be you know maybe two times as powerful. It, it's it's actually significantly more. Um, yeah. so it, like the actual pixel count of like 4K versus 8K is such a massive leap that it's gonna be like the the tech needs to have some major upgrades by that point for it to be able yeah. to do it. And and the tech and that you would need in order as, to even see that stuff sure. would need that major yeah. upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You look at something like when the One X came out, right? Like that was what three years ago, um, and. So for being able to play, you know, 4K, great, right? Um, But who really was even close to doing that Um, to the point that we're still talking about 4K with these console releases, right? So you're right. We're not going to see that for a really, really long time. It's more interesting what studios will be able to do with this technology. You know, when you look at something like the PlayStation 5 and how... um, Ratchet and Clank, how they showed off that game where you're warping into different levels um, where it seems like you don't have uh, loading times. And us, I believe all of us have not actually gotten our hands on the PlayStation 5 yet. So we don't know how it actually plays, right? But yeah. having that, right? And when you think of what's capable with Quick Resume and the Xbox Series X, it's like the world of possibilities for a game like we were we were uh, talking about the possibility if there was ever of a Spider Verse game, and being yeah. able to jump into different Spider Verses and the technology of next gen making that seem so seamless would just be amazing. It's like the dream for any possible. Spider nerd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, hey, so, hey, PlayStation Canada. <laughs> you enjoying this podcast? <laughs> yeah like it, yeah. Would, it would be um, amazing to see that technology be utilized and we really won't get the sense of that um till later on in the gen so the so do people pick up next gen right now like does it make sense like for us it's a little different because we are living and breathing in the world of gaming we kind of have to have next gen in order to create content around what's relevant right, right? Uh-huh. um yeah I, does I think the average consumer do that right now to me the prime consumer of this gen of console of this this next gen of console here is someone who skipped a generation i i don't think yeah. it's ever been better and more affordable and more accessible to say uh i think of my girlfriend who her current xbox i believe is maybe an s if not, just mm-hmm. kind of like an, an original Xbox One. Yeah. Her, and yeah. she she got, uh, and is maybe even receiving like a day early today kind of thing, because of how shipping works there. Because is that tomorrow? My, or day after tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Yeah. Happy yeah. Now? yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. My, tomorrow, my tomorrow, brain. Tomorrow. Uh, Mine's yeah, getting so. here on time, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's going to get like, her, for her, the leap from essentially an original Xbox One right. to the Series X is such a massive leap that it's mm-hmm. like, but it's familiar, and that's the thing, and that's what we're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna see with this this gen of consoles that like you're gonna have the games that you've already kind of been playing and stuff, and they're gonna be able to work at backwards compatible stuff. But now you're like now you can keep up with all your friends who are cross playing with you on PC who are doing stuff like that, right? And now and again going back to the story of like the see these things like that's her. Sorry, sorry, Bree. Um, <laughs> she, she's the one that like we have to uh, strategically be like don't leave the ship because if you have to warp back to the ship, you're gonna get us all killed because uh, your 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 hardware sucks. Uh, but as soon as she gets this, suddenly. She's playing with us now, right? Like she's on the same level, and so I think like I think there are more people than you think out there that yeah. maybe only had an original PS4, an original Xbox One, or whatever, because it's it's done. It's been a pretty efficient generation. Like they've been you've been able to play a variety of games because it's, it's it has been an incremental generation because the Xbox One X, it, kind of the same thing. You know, it's all part of that same kind of generation. And the, since we're considering this technically the next generation. Uh, never been a better time assuming you can get your hands on one that's going to be the next issue they got to deal with but if you can like now's the moment you're going to be up to speed and this will keep you uh it's like it's like a graphics card to me for pc right like you like you want once you get the you find those moments to upgrade because right now for me i have a 2080 no reason yeah. to get a 3080 yet uh maybe the next one then we're going to start seeing like sure. now it was worth it i'm not even yeah. sure do we see something of the equivalent right. 
I was going to say, do we do we see something even of the equivalent of like an Xbox One to an Xbox One X for this generation? Like, I'm not even sure if there will be anything. I don't, like I don't that, even right? know if we will see that. That That's middle of the road I, console, you know? I think it really, sure. really depends only- on what displays do in the future. Because right now, the only reason we have a One X is because so many people were doing that leap to 4K. And that was the big thing that everyone wanted to bust open that gateway and get into 4K and have that on mm-hmm. the box. Mm-hmm. Again, we going back to that 8K conversation. Unless that's even feasible in the next four years, I just don't even. I don't see the point. So I don't see the point really, unless I, it's slimmer. Yeah, true. And, and true, like, totally, I, that, yeah, you're absolutely right. Point. I could see that uh, like a slim version. Um, I actually have a lot of confidence, especially with the way. Speaking of Microsoft specifically, especially in the way mm-hmm. that they've been working on in the past few years, and like with this console, their ability to optimize the existing console. Uh, yes. whether that's using because it's very clear to me for instance how they have you know the add-on port for the ssd card like that's a very they're doing that for very very specific reasons mm-hmm. i think that we're going to see just like how you know they were tight-lipped on saying if all games will be able to be like essentially optimized and then they came out and said we wanted to make sure every single one was before we said they can and now we're coming out and say they can do it we tested it and i think we're going to keep seeing that from microsoft with them being like in the next year so we're like hey so uh Everyone's going to get a free update today. Uh, we're going to optimize the heck out of Quick Resume. Quick Resume will now happen twice as fast. I think they have <laughs> built this to function like a PC in the sense that their firmware updates will be major leaps more than we've ever seen in an existing console. And I, I agree with you on that one, especially when you look at um, what you were telling us with Brie and, oh, Brie. Now you'll be able to keep up with, with them Very in a sea of thieves. Very exciting. <laughs> no, um, like terms of being able to be on the S and you really don't have a reason if you were not, if you didn't have the one X right to upgrade uh, because you have services like game pass where you have a a library of games that you could continuously play. And with everything that Microsoft is doing are trying to, we know Phil Spencer said they're trying to, you know, really make sure everyone could play um, Mm -hmm. no matter what they're playing on. Right. And with services like game pass X cloud, all of that is just coming in tune with, yes, you don't have to play on one device. You could play on this device. And even if they have this one device, you're probably going to be able to upgrade it. Um, and it won't cost you a lot either. Yeah. So I think that's a really cool way to go about it because, you know, how we've been going about consoles and needing to upgrade every, you know, six, seven years, um, it's just not functional anymore, especially with the graphical capabilities kind of reaching that cap, right? So. The way Xbox is doing it is really no great. Cap. I don't know cap, uh, but I don't know what PlayStation will do. Like, you know, PlayStation, they have services in place that can be great services like PlayStation Now, but they're not bleeding the love into that to make it accessible to you know most of their gamers. So I, I, I think, think it, one- they just they just care about the games at the that's end of the day. That's 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 PlayStation's main focus is that yeah. they want to make sure that they got the exclusives. Xbox. Yeah. Xbox right now is in that very pro consumer position where they're like, hey, listen, we're not going to have exclusive games for a little while. So until then, here's stuff like Game Pass, which, by the way, just announced today that they're doing like a 30 day Disney Plus yeah. subscription yeah. with Game Pass. All the time, awesome. Yeah. Um, How do they make money? I, how do I they don't they get it. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't it know. Is, yeah. Been yeah. Trying, there I have over a, there. a chalkboard trying to break down the freaking equation of how they're making money yeah. with everything that they're offering. It's insane. But you got to you got to give PlayStation credit where credits due. Like, listen, to, there's just no arguing it. Um, in terms of who won, oh, although isn't. although at the end of the day, like I think if if we're speaking on a general note, like just the consumers won on across the board. Yeah, I think so, but yeah. if you if you're looking like bottom line, who won the console generation? It is PlayStation. They just mm-hmm. More people bought that console. They had more games. Um, that was at least for the the previous console generation. For a majority of it, until we got towards the end, where Xbox really started to shift their focus, that was what you needed to win the console generation, right? And that's what PlayStation did. They got Spider Man. They got God of War. They got The Last of Us. Just Uncharted. Like the list just goes on and on and on. Ghost of Tsushima, which is my personal game of the console generation um and and so on and so forth and then now like leading into next gen they got demon souls coming they got which i although i don't think that's exclusive i think that's coming to pc i'm not 100 percent sure um they got spider-man miles morales which is ps4 but still ps5 ratchet and clank is there horizons on the way god of war 2 is on the way um and there's gonna be an inevitable spider-man 2 as well like that franchise is just gonna keep going 
And so, like, they're going to just have those games. They want to obviously prioritize the ability of next gen with the SSDs, but I don't think they're as worried about a feature like Quick Resume or to have something like a, their own version of Game Pass because they know that their consumers are willing to stay loyal to their brand uh, so long as they continue releasing those exclusives the same way they did with this current generation of console. I don't think there's any argument there. Like, I don't think, uh, we know that they're about the games. We know that they're about the exclusives. We know right. that their exclusives are great. I love God of War. I love The Last of Us. But the thing is, yeah. when you go into this next gen uh, console, I was gonna say next gen generation consoles, Next gen mm -hmm. consoles, um, you do have to look at what your competitor is doing. If your competitor right. is offering something that is techno like technically um, making more advancements than what your console's doing, there's only there's only so much so that you can go with your exclusive. Yes, they will drive home in terms of like you know the PlayStation fanboys and girls that want to buy the console to play those exclusives. However, you see PlayStation doing things like trying to do this PlayStation collection. So they know that they do have to bundle a bunch of their games together to kind of combat Game Pass. Yeah. So it's not like they know that they just have to stick with their 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 uh, exclusives and they're good. They but do have to shake case. things up. Honestly, I, th I honestly, that is the so. case. The, the One X is so. the most powerful console right now before the next gen comes out. And that did nothing in terms yeah. of like, bust like bumping sales for xbox to even compete with playstation i guarantee you that even everyone who had a, a base playstation 4 the original playstation 4 weren't compelled to get a 1x if they were already playing on playstation do you understand yeah. what i mean like yeah. the tech is cool but at the end of the day for the consumers they want to play games and if they can get more games on their playstation then that's where they're going to go you yeah, know what it, i mean it, it, it's an interesting discussion because you're, you're totally right that like you know playstation and to me it it uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're right that it feels like their their almost only play is that they're hammering in these exclusives, right? Like yes. You see that in their marketing, you yes. see that in their presentations, yeah. right? They're like, we got these exclusive games that you love, that look gorgeous, that tell a great story, kind of thing. Like you're you come for these stories that you want to continue. You come here for this universe that you want to continue. Mm -hmm. um, where Microsoft and, and it, but it is a, it is a short term play that they have to keep refreshing over and over and over again. They have yeah. to keep cranking those out, and that's mm -hmm. you know, that to me that's a house of cards. That at some point inevitably we're going to see that yes. no longer work for them we're exactly. going to see micro microsoft's play is so long game and has always been microsoft has been always very they're always the first one to take flack for introducing ideas we think of the xbox the original xbox one reveal uh they're like you got to be connected to the internet and like what DRM, game do you play yeah. now that even allows you to play yeah. and I mean, like, all the popular games like i always say that i'm like they were the ones you know that so, some stuff about that aside it wasn't perfect but like the point being that they, you know, now that they're doing, they're really doubling down on subscription services and things that like, like, which on one hand, you can be like, oh, you know, we're getting nickel and dimed here, but their subscription service like Game Pass is, I feel like I couldn't live without it at this point. Like it's yeah. the, it is the coolest thing. Like I'm so, they're, they're very clearly v savvy about retaining existing audiences and just again being so 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 consumer friendly allowing you to play your old games making that a focus and like you know focus focus on versus like new you need a new controller you need new games you need all this stuff versus like use your old controller use your old stuff play your old games we want to honor that history and keep you locked in this ecosystem and so i feel right now the people who are invested in the microsoft ecosystem it's a better investment, in my opinion. So, like, yes. for every game you buy, everything you do there on, on Xbox, it just it keeps growing, growing, growing until you have this massive library and stuff. But everything you do on PlayStation there, you might lose it. Like, you run more of a risk of a chance of, like, either having to keep the old console or doing whatever. It's a lot harder to... It's it's not like it's not a growing of an ecosystem. It's like a building of an ecosystem. For yes. yes. And I that's, feel that's like... That's a you're, great way to put it. You're absolutely right. Like, I am a fan of, obviously, Xbox and... I also love PlayStation. I love playing their exclusives. I think PlayStation is recognizing that they do have to do things different. And we may not see that reflect necessarily in the first two years of PlayStation 5, but mm -hmm. we've seen games like um, Horizon Zero Dawn where they allow it on PC. Death Stranding, they're allowing that on PC. There's a reason why they're doing this. There's a reason why they're doing the PlayStation collection mm -hmm. and that they've spoke about trying to offer more services in that respect to their users. And I think it is because they realize that can only, the exclusives could only lead them on that front for so far. 
Um, yeah. They do have to diversify it. And I'm not going to say they're going to go out of business. PlayStation will keep making money. There's yeah. no argument about that. But yeah. what are they going to do to really refresh in um, their fans' love of the consoles that is outside of the exclusives? Because that now, like where we look, especially when you look at Xbox buying out all these studios, mm -hmm. they own freaking Skyrim now. Yeah, this, that, that is that, huge. That, that I is, forgot. That is so much has happened this year that I forgot that. Uh, yeah, happened. you're yeah. like, oh yeah, <laughs> right. There's what? so much that they're doing on their front. PlayStation, I think, is waking up and they're like, okay, we need to kind of move faster on whatever plans they had or mm -hmm. make up plans if they didn't have any plans. And I think that's just going to be really interesting mm -hmm. to see because I'm not about the console wars since I think, you know, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough at every console generation to own both consoles. Mm -hmm. um, and I go to different consoles for different things. Um, yep. Right. When I'm playing like a lot of my multiplayer games, I play on my Xbox. Um, when I'm looking for those story based driven games, I play on my PlayStation. And I think and that's I'll always recommend if you're for me. Yeah. And I'll always recommend if you're on a budget, like if you're playing games on a budget, just get an Xbox. Like oh, Game Pass is, yeah. is the ultimate pro consumer deal. Yeah. If you just want to play a ton of different games for as little amount of money as possible, Get Especially with Bethesda in there now too. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you will never play through all the Game Pass games. Hundred <laughs> like, percent, and, and and for sure, like in a couple of years when that next Oblivion is on the horizon, and they say that it's coming to Xbox console exclusive, which will happen. Mark my words. I really uh, then, then 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 there's going to be a bit of a battle between the two consoles and which one people really want to lean towards. Um, but yeah, like right now, you know, if you're, if you're one of those gamers who wants to play as many games as possible, if you're, if you don't necessarily have a specific budget and you just want to play games, get yourself a PlayStation. You got games like Spider-Man on there, which I do think are fantastic. Like I, I think Spider-Man Miles Morales is a truly special game. Uh, I know we couldn't get too far into my thoughts on it, but I think it's a really, really good game. Even though it's a smaller game than Spider-Man PS4, it is fantastic. If it weren't for Spider-Man PS4, that would feel like a full $60 game to me. Uh, it has everything okay. in there, enough content in there to feel like cool. it's a full $60 game. Um, but overall, like, again, if you're playing on a budget, get yourself an Xbox. There is so much available for you there. That's so pro-consumer. And one final thought I want to throw in there is that I, if everything we've just talked about is Microsoft's long game. Uh, yeah. They're mm -hmm. in a battle of attrition at this point with, with yep. Sony. That at some point, we're seeing with that PlayStation collection, at a certain point, PlayStation customers and players are going to start looking at Sony and be like, well, why don't I have this thing? Why don't I have mm -hmm. a Game Pass? Why don't I have a design lab? Why can't why, I why... play Xbox games on my phone? Or PC. Or, or, yeah. 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 That's why we're seeing more Sony uh, games go over there. And this is mm -hmm. Microsoft's long game is putting pressure on Sony to to make changes. Whether or not, like, I, I can't predict the market in this regard because Sony is kind of, you know, they, they can... They have an ego at some point where they're like, this is what we're going to do. This is the track we're going to set. So I don't know if that's going to change over this generation. But the fact is that I think Microsoft's doing a really compelling, making a really compelling argument to say, we're doing all this great stuff. And especially with acquisitions, just they have a promise of we're going to deliver eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, in and I'm looking forward to playing on both consoles even more. Well, with the Xbox Series X, I've been enjoying that. This week. Um, yeah. And then with PlayStation, like, what do we do with our time? We can't eat. <laughs> we need more days in the week. How well does the PS5 stack? <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't look do stackable to me. Oh, my God. Is it going to go vertically on yeah, top of the, the top Xbox. one. Yeah. yeah. So then you really do have a tower of consoles, and that's like that's the little true. top of your tower. Oh, dude, that picture would trigger so many people. I <laughs> and on you top of my PC case, too. <laughs> you gotta oh, put it be in good. there. Oh, my God. It, it's, it's definitely going to be a wild ride this week. And I feel like next week, once we get more information on, like, sales of units, um, what consumers are saying, if there's any issues in terms of um, accessibility, because there's no number yet on how many consoles for the Xbox uh, Series X S, as well as the PlayStation 5 are out there. So mm -hmm. how many people will be able to get their hands on these consoles? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I, I want to add in there. I do think if you're thinking of getting a PlayStation 5, I'm getting a PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's worth it to do the discless version. Well, it is worth it to do the discless version. Sorry, on the... Um, PlayStation 5 because you're getting the full capability. It's just you don't have that disk drive. Right. Um, I sure. think you should get that. Whereas for me, and you know, Steve, you 
talked about the Series S before, I would say just wait and invest more money into getting the Series X. I, I think uh, invest a couple more hundred dollars into getting the Series X just for that storage and, you know, the 4K capability if you're able to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to dive in. Uh, boys, thank you guys so much uh, for chatting. It's been a pleasure. What games are you guys going to play on each of your consoles when you uh, hop Spider-Man. off the Play Spider-Man on PlayStation 5? <laughs> Yep. I'm, st- I'm still wait. playing Valhalla, baby. Like I'm still. Uh-huh. I think it's. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Valhalla, uh, Demon Souls. I'm really looking forward to as well. I think that game looks beautiful, and Blue Point it's knocking it out of the park with that game. Sweet. Yeah. I'm gonna hop on to some Valhalla probably after the stream, and then when my PlayStation comes in, definitely uh, Spider Man. I want to test it out on PlayStation Five and really get my feel for it. Um, so chat, thank you guys so much. Uh, but you know we gotta go play games. Remember, if you uh, want to tune in on anything that is squad, check out our website, squadstate.com, where we got really cool articles, a lot of stuff coming about next-gen consoles, um, as well as our socials at Squad State uh, to chime in on what you think we should discuss next week, or if you agree or disagree with anything that we discussed today. Uh, Green Skull, thank you so much for joining us. Where can everyone find you? The Green Skull is also an expert marksman. God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> is that what you've been doing? You look at that. Vast Google. wealth, contacts, and political influence. His only superpower is decelerated aging. That's it. <laughs> what? That's the dumbest superhero of all time. I have decelerated aging because I don't go uh, outside. I am the Green Skull. You, are you the follow Green Skull. at Green Skull everywhere. Okay, thank you. Also, if you follow uh, DC Universe, you could also follow Green Skull there. Fun fact. <laughs> but until uh, next time, uh, we'll we'll see you for now. And just enjoy playing games, everybody. Enjoy this monumental week in gaming, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.